In this session we'll talk about the calculation of load on the wood structure uh, and we'll follow the the load path and this is sketch to be able to do the calculation correctly. So if you look at the the first thing is that we will need to calculate the load on the roof itself and here we have uh, the snow load and the self weight of the floor the roof itself and this will of course this will be half of the roof will go to this other side and the other half will go to this side and now we'll calculate the we'll get the value here this is the W1 and W1, the location of load is here. And then after that, we will have the self weight also of the wall. This one here will be added to the this W1. Then we get the load at this position. This is W2. And W2 will be used as a load for the design of this wall. So this is for the design of this wall, we'll use W2. And once we move below, then we have, we'll have the, just clean the sketch. I'll just leave this as W1, and this is W2. Then once we pass this, well, the load, this is, the load was at this stage, so we have this stage W1 and this is W2. Now I need to calculate the load at this stage. And for that part, I will need the carry-on load, which is this one. And then the, the participation of the floor from this side, because half of this load floor load will go this and the other half will go to this side. So I'll have this one plus this one plus the self-weight of the wall. This will compose the load at this stage. So we need to understand this concept to be able to do the calculation right. So that is for these. So this is called, I'll call this one W3. So I'll use W3 to design this wall. Because after all, we, what we are trying to do is to design these walls. This wall, this wall, this wall, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is the concept for these exterior walls, but when we come to the interior walls, and the interior wall, this normally the, the truss will sit always on the exterior walls, on this wall and another wall here. So the interior wall at this level has, has no load sitting on it. This is zero. The load is here is zero. So if I would like to calculate the load, this load at this stage will be only the self weight of the wall self weight of the wall above it. Same thing goes for the calculation of the load here. Because we calculate the load at the bottom of the column or the wall to be able to design this wall, for example. So for this wall, and if you all you can call this W5 and this is say W6. So W6 is composed of the carry-on of W5, which is this one. Carry on this one plus the contribution of the floors. So the contribution of the floors come from this side and from this side, from both sides. And then the self weight of the wall itself. So it will be composed of the carry-on and the contribution of the floors and the self weight of the wall. We'll do an example later on to just explain this concept with numbers. But we need to pay attention to the, just the, the path of the, of the loads. Now what we need to know is we need to get into the details of the of the loads now, and we'll take advantage of of the Canadian Wood Council in which uh, because uh, for the self weight, so we'll do some sort of uh, uh, calculation. Now the self weight, for example, of the floor here is suggested to be approximately equal to. 0 0.5 kilopascal. A kilopascal is kilonewton per square meter. So kilopascal 
is equal to kilonewton per square meter. So the roof will be always composed of the sulfate of the floor of the roof and the snow load. And the equation for that will be, of course, we'll use the Canadian uh, uh, entire building code. And the entire building code uh, for roof, the equation will be is 1.25 multiplied by the dead load, that is the roof meaning, plus 1.5 multiplied by snow load. So that is an equation that you will use based on the entire building code. Now it comes when we come when it comes to the wall. Now they calculate the load on the sulfate of the wall. It will be full wall will have the equation is we'll use one point four as a factor and then the dead load of the wall. That will be the calculation for the calculation of the wall. And for typical floor it will be one point five dead load plus one point five live load. These are the equations for each case. So I'll have this load. Now I'll detail the now based on the on this information from the Canadian Wood Council. So what you will need to do is you will always use here the dead load for this equal to zero point five, this one. So use zero point five kilonewton per square meter. And the sulfate, again, this will be the sulfate of the wall. Sulfate of the wall is from here, again. So this is equal to 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter. And the sulfate of the floor here is from here, which is 1.5 kilonewton per square meter. So this will help us to get the equation. Of course, we'll go into the details an example, but this is just explained to you the self weight of the roof is 0 0.4 and the uh, self weight the self weight is 0 0.5 the self weight of the wall is 0 0.4 and the self weight of the typical floor is 1.5 just to keep that in mind and you can write all of these things and the procedure is you are allowed to bring the procedure with you to the test and same thing goes for the assignment, you can use them for the assignment. So next session we'll do uh, an example that will uh, demonstrate all of these 